And then if you're on your spine on the roller, time to come off. I promise you do some chest opening with the roller across the body anyway. So just take it perpendicular to your body to your mat. And you're going to lean back onto it with the roller right about the base of the rib cage to the scapula. And you can stay bent. You let your belly sink down into the floor. Support your head with your hands. And then from here, you look up at the ceiling and back behind you across the sky with the elbows a bit wide. You should go back into extension, supporting the head with your hands. Exhale, lift the head, chin to chest, look down your midline, down your shoulder, down your navel. Pull the elbows together and down as you come forward in flexion. The upright curl will go over the front of the lower back also. And then the inhale, the gaze goes across the room, up the wall to the ceiling, and back. Let your body fall open, bending backwards over the curve of the roll. And exhale as you come up with the head. Also pull the waist down, curl the tail up. The spine is in flexion, bending up towards the ceiling at both ends of the spine. And take it back again. If you want to be sure the roller is in a comfortable place for you, if it's too much extension, take the roller higher up by your shoulders. If it's not enough, take it a little lower towards your waist. Exhale to lift to come forward with the flexion. Look down and in. Elbows narrow here to widen the scapula on your back with your shoulder blades. And then as we go back, we lift the elbows to open and drop down to the big stretch through your chest and across the foot of your shoulders. Now, as you come up, we're lifting the right leg. Exhale, come up and pull up the knee fold. So we're looking still down your midline. No rotation yet. And then lower the foot as you go down. You work the leg with control. So when you're in full extension, you're fully grounded. Lifting the head, neck, and chest. Picking up your left leg. Again, down your midline here. And then go ahead. Inhale back into extension. So feel the roller roll under your back a little bit, giving you a massage right in that place for your balance on it. And then we're coming up again, and stop all the way up, look down, look down your nose, and then inhale. Go to the abdominal wall as you go back, as you lower the foot, you fall back into maximum extension here. And exhale forward, lifting the head, and curling the neck, curving the upper back, picking up your left leg. And the leg goes down. When you're in full extension of your spine, you want to have the foot grounded and sinking into the mat. Now we'll come up and twist. You lift your head, neck, and chest. You rotate to the right, pull the left armpit towards the knee, and then unwind the body and just slowly lower the leg. The foot goes back onto the same place in the mat where you just brought it up from. And now we're coming up, exhaling, and twisting to the left. Right hip is grounded. Release yourself down, unwind, and fall back into extension as you lower the leg from your hip flexor, your psoas, and then come up again and twist to the left. Release on out of it, go back across the scapula, then fall back into extension. Exhale forward, twisting to the left. So to wake up some of those oblique abdominals, and then lower the leg, fall back into your extension here. And now we'll pick up the head and go a little bit, maybe lower in case that lower is slipped. And then we're going to press your feet and lift your hips up in the air. So you can go back and forth, pick up your any ponytails, jewelry, hoods coming off your sweatshirt on the back, and you're rolling along the length of your rib cage. So you go to the very top of the shoulders, hang the head down and lift the pelvis up. As you push off your feet and move away from your feet, curl into flexion. Keeping the butt off the mat. So back and forth here a few times. Just feel that pull and massage your back, massage your shoulders, stay off your neck. And be sure as you roll back with the head that you only roll to the base of the rib cage. Stay on the ribs that protect your kidneys. And one more time with this. So it's flexion and extension of your spine, adds to the deep tissue massage. If it's confusing for your body, if this is the first time, just go back and forth and neutral spine and flat, flat. And now let's do one more. Come all the way down to the head, lift this high. Elbows open wide and drop behind you. So you open your waist and close your waist as you come forward into function. We'll go ahead and lower the hips down. You may have, like me, pushed the roller back a little further. We've got more push to the quads and we have pull through the abs 
So that's why you do backwards like that. So just come back to where you want to be. And now here, we'll just rotate to the right. We'll cross the shoulder right, keep the left hip down. And then we're going to go keeping the right hip down for that massage into maybe the tip of the scapula. And when we're set like that, twisting and reaching around, pressing the opposite hip into the floor. Maybe inhale into the twist and then exhale to pull back to center. Now lift your hips again. Rotate to your left this time so I can see you the first time. And then we're going to push and pull. You want to be on the outside edge of the shoulder blade. So this is a little tense sometimes. That's your lap. And you go up and down three, four times, something like that. It really works for you on the lateral edge. And then let's go across the right shoulder blade and go up and down that edge. You can take your butt off the ground. If it's too much, you can, also, you can always add padding under the body over the roller. You can put a towel or something on it. Or you can go back to the earlier version where your hips are on the floor. And then center, lower the sacrum down, it's down. And let's slide forward back just a little bit. You can take it under your neck. The knees not in the oval as wide as your back. And then slowly turn your head from one side to the other, holding the roller in position with your hands. To massage out the back of the skull, right hip makes a little bridge. You feel the floating points from one side of the skull to the other. Just trying to release some of the tension of the day. As you roll back and forth. You also have the option of bringing your chin closer to your chest or further up so you can experiment with say where you need that release, that release in the connective tissue around your skull. This is great for the neck. We don't do an rotation in your spine, you could consider the spine. This is a really good thing so your spine gets to work to passive. All right. And then come up to sitting. We're going to take the roller across under our sacrum, which is the widest part of the hips. Sacrum is a big, fiber deep bone here near the base of your spine. And so boost up, roll it, roll it underneath you. And again, raise your hands around the roller so that the roller doesn't go forward. Let's begin by picking the right knee up into a knee fold. Exhale, pull the left leg up to match it, to join it. And then holding up to the outside edge of the roller, let the knees fall over to the right as you turn it into the left. Keep your left shoulder blade down. See how much rotation you have and how much massage you can get into the glute. Exhale, pull from your obliques. You're pulling the right hip up, the left hip down. And keep going so the knees float over to your left as you turn your head to the right. Feet are off the floor here unless you need them on the ground for more support. Exhale, you can push into the roller with your arms to initiate that movement, and you'll feel more muscle engagement. The legs drift to the right as you look to the left. Always keeping the collarbones wide, shoulder blades grounded as you twist away from them, coming back through center, and then the knees fall over to your left, where you're gonna move away. Get the rotation of both ends of your spine, the low back and in the neck. Exhale, pull it back to center, and maybe inhale over to the right again. Do one more set here. Appreciating how much rotation you get in your body. Exhale, pull it back. And then to the other side. Look away each time. Exhale, come back to center. And then from here, lift the legs up to the ceiling. Soft point through your feet, don't over point to the point where you get like a crack in the foot. So you reach more through the balls of the feet and then the tarsals of the toes. And we'll bring the right leg back over your shoulder, over your chest as the left leg is forward. A split in midair. And then we inhale to switch the legs. Both of this back, the right leg goes forward. And exhale to switch again. When you bring the leg up, if your hamstrings are tight, you might be looking for the slight bend in the knee. But then as you lower the leg, be sure to stretch it out straight in there. 
The idea of that is we're trying to get the stretch in the middle of the hamstring, not behind the knee, not at the sits bone. Stretch the muscle where it's able to stretch. So this should feel good to be aware of the stretch, but it isn't going to be a concern. One more set. Base to ceiling. Neck is relaxed. And then we'll bring both legs up to the sky. X-ray, rotate the legs, heels together, toes apart. And then pull the legs apart with that external rotation. They drift sideways and exhale, pull them up and in, close the pelvic floor and the upper inner thigh. And then pull again from the upper outer thigh to pull the legs out and down towards the side. And then exhale to lift them up. And let's do that again once more. We're not opening here. Exhale to close. Now leave the left leg vertical, bring the right leg up to the side, hold the left side of the body, heavy on your roller. Exhale, pull the right leg up to your time, use the full breath. And now the right leg is vertical, the left leg is sideways, it comes down into maybe your left elbow, your right arm too. Keep the pelvis grounded across the face of the roller. Exhale, lift the leg. The left one is vertical, the right leg is out to the side. We'll inhale to open it out and down without rocking the pelvis. Stay grounded here. Exhale to lift the leg up. And then the left leg is out to the side here. Stretch. Exhale to pull it up again. And then bring your feet into parallel. Bicycle. So let's take the right leg forward as you bend the left knee into your chest. The leg reaches out, straight leg as much as you can. Bend the knee when you have to slide the foot across the mat towards the roller. And then as the right leg pulls in, the left one is extended. You bring the bicycle before, maybe not uh, this recumbent. And you're at this particular version, we're keeping the legs in parallel. Sometimes we also do this in a frog position. In external rotation, particularly with the equipment. Really switch your toes, float through the air, reach out long before you pull it in, and then extend the leg back over your shoulder. But it sits back to the wall behind you, get the maximum stretch. And then when you're ready, we're going to reverse and back pedal. So one foot slides forward and lifts with the straight leg, the other one skates out, straight leg before you lift it. Exhale to pick the leg up in the air. Inhale to slide it forward. Exhale to lift it. So it's kind of a leisurely cycle through space. We're really trying to get that openness across the front of the hip as the leg goes forward down the mat. And then also feel the leg in the hamstring. You should pull the straight leg back over your shoulder towards the wall behind you. Right. And then we'll lift both legs up to the ceiling. And bend the knees, exhale, lower the feet to the back. You may want to lift your hips up and then change the rotation of the roller underneath the body so you're not in that flat spot. And then here, let's slide your right leg forward. See if you get the heel to rest on the ground. The right leg might be a little bent. If it's too much extension in your back, a good option is to pull the left knee into your chest. That will diminish the stretch a little bit on the right side. However, if you can have the right foot down, that's also a good version. So if that feels okay in your back, uh, you'll extend the right arm back behind you. Give the stretch of the full length of your right side. Sometimes too, if the roller is in the wrong place, it doesn't feel comfortable. So you can always adjust the roller a little bit down or up so you find the perfect spot to drape your body across. If you feel the stretch across the top of the hip bone press, and into the abdominal wall and down to the top of the thigh. Take a nice deep breath in to feel length on the right side for fingertips and bone, two toes. And then on the exhale, let the back of the body sink into the ground, let it drape and melt towards the floor if it's under a deep breath. Do one more breath here. Exhale slowly, completely. The belly hits together at the end of the exhale. And then we'll bring the arm back to pull the roller into position, slide the foot back. And right with a lift, we adjust. And then we can slide the left leg forward. The two sides can feel quite different. 
So if you need to bend this knee, you do with the other. That's just the way your body is today. Try to have the leg go straight out of the socket so that both legs are only about four inches apart. If you're tight on the outside of your thigh, we'll need a tendency to drift sideways a little bit out on the diagonal. We're not looking for that. We're looking for balance on the inner and outer line of the leg, working the mus muscles and working for development. So then here, now that you stretch that leg long across the top of the hip, bring the left arm back. Back of the hand would rest on the ground. Is that comfortable for your shoulder? If it's not, you can suddenly keep the arms forward on the roller. And just breathe into this again. You feel the muscle stretch, but you may also want to feel like a little tightening of the connective tissue stretching. It has a little different sensation and it will unfold more gradually. It will stretch a little bit open over time. So we're staying here for two more breaths. Inhale, deep exhale out. And after the next exhale, pull that leg in, pull the arm back. So you have the option, if that was successful for you, you could try taking both legs forward at the same time. This is more, this will provide more arch in the back if your hip flexors are tight. So that could be a good thing if it's comfortable for you and a bad thing if it's uncomfortable. So if it's not comfortable, bend your knees a little bit or go back to one leg at a time. And only if it's comfortable, the arms go back and stretch behind you both together with a full front line stretch. This is the perfect antithesis to being punched over your desk, over your computer, over whatever it is you're doing all day long. Deep slowly and deeply. Focus on the sensation of the breath filling your body and then emptying as well as the sensation of the stretch opening up that front line. Then we'll bring the hands back to the roller, pull the legs back in so your feet are grounded. Bridge up, you can push down through your arms a little bit and slide, roll it out from underneath you. And then go down. And then we can extend the legs. And you just notice how much your whole body has dropped into gravity. So Good, good job. So from here, let's pull the right knee into your chest, hold up to the back of the thigh, lift the left leg up to the ceiling. We're rolling forward and up to start hundreds and then we get to the mat floor today. So you can come here, lift up towards your mat with your hips. You sit, lift your chest and up tall with your arm in the mid part of the back here. And then we begin with down, curling the tail up so you roll behind your sits bones towards your sacrum and then over your sacrum. The hands might slide down the legs, but the hands can be free. If you're used to doing this, you come down with control, one inch, one vertebra, and put every bit of that move back into the ground and you stop at the tip of your scapula. Pull the right leg in, pull the left leg in also, and we will lift the legs towards the ceiling, extend the arms forward at your side, and start pumping the arms. So you will be down your nose at your belly. Squeezing the legs together anywhere that they would touch. And you can squeeze them together if they're not touching. Your arms go up and down. The traditional is inhale for five breaths, exhale for five more. Ten sets of those will make a hundred, hence the name. The purpose here is to warm up the body by getting the blood flow to really um, move from one end of the body to the other. You might feel a little heat rising in the body to your place called back to the internal furnace. The arms squeeze in just slightly around the outside of the rib cage. And again, with the breathing in, the abdominal wall expands, the belly lifts, and then exhale contracts. You said you may have heard the body's turn to be able to slide. That's okay. One more breath, like so. And then we fold the knees in, we lay the head down, and then you can touch the ground, open the arms out in a T position, and then rock the knees from side to side and it turns in the other direction to release tension in the neck. And then the low back. 
Then we'll come back to center for roll up. If you're new to this, you may want to use a theraband around your feet. We'll extend the legs forward, bring the arms up in the air, and then start to lift the head, neck, and chest. Exhale, hold yourself up, belly over, and suck the waist back as you bend your head over your knees, the shoulders melt behind your body. Here's where you could add the theraband. And then you go back, reach you forward through the legs, the legs are zipper together, feel it. And the arms only as high as you have control of your body into the ground. Curve the spine down. You feel inch by inch of the abdominal wall working to bring down the control. Bring the shoulders down, bring the head and neck back, reach the arms behind you without lifting the rib cage. You're coming up again. Exhale, really feel the weight of your ribs, pulling the waist back and you bend over. Then the full forward of the waist, release down your back. You're skiing down the mountain here of your back, of your spine. And then we're bringing it back. Your arms can go higher. If you have control and you can lower them if you feel like you're losing, you can like just fall into gravity, take the arms lower. You always work on the edge of the challenge, right? I don't want you to come out of class and think you work hard enough. But I also don't want you to come out thinking that you know, it's something that could hurt you because you weren't paying enough attention to what your body needed. So moment, moment by moment, movement by movement, you have to pay attention to your body's cues and do what's right for a challenge that's still sexy. And all the way down, down left back, or you can the top off of the legs so you get the ribs grounded. Release all the way back up the spine. Let's do one more. And the breath is important too. Inhale to begin the movement, exhale before you come up with the shoulders with the wrists, pull the waist back. We're going to end up in a C curve spine here. So if you're a horseshoe resting on its side. And then we'll go back again. Maybe we'll bring your fair bed with you. Can't believe I remember that, I never do. And then come all the way down. And then we'll pull your right knee into your chest and brace it in, the left leg stays long. And we'll take your fair band and place the center of it around the ball of the foot and the beginning of the arch. The toes are not breath into the band. You lift the leg up to the ceiling. Take your elbows low by your waist, moving the shoulders away from the ears. As you lift the leg up to get the stretch, you're reaching up through the heel and down into the glute. Bend the knee if your hamstrings are tight and still feel the stretch of the back line. Now, from this position, a couple of points, we have to reach up to the toes, exhale, reach up to the heel. We articulate the foot, the ball toe, instead of just flapping it like um, a brick here on the end of the foot. There are a lot of bones, a lot of joints in your feet. You want to articulate and move through as many of those joints as you can. We'll end with a soft point, maybe lower the leg slightly, and we circle the leg, bringing it across the body without lifting the right hip. Go down low. The right leg moves out to the right with external rotation. The left hip is pressing into the floor, grounding yourself. So although we're reaching out into the back to stretch the leg, we're also equally focused on keeping the pelvic girdle in particular stable on the mat. You can feel that even your right arm pushes down as the leg, right leg is across to the left. You go low and neutral, out to the side and external rotation. Neutral the top to feel that hamstring stretch. So two more. Short deep inhale to start the circle and then a long exhale, keep exhaling, 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 exhaling to the top. The reason for doing that is you want to feel the abdominal wall knit together at the top of the movement. So you know you're really engaging that core. Come to the top, reverse. Actually rotate the weight through out to the right. The left side is heavy. You don't shift your weight on the mat. Coming around, picking up the foot, but not the hips on the right side. So you reach, you like and you stretch out. You can rotate here from the elbow points on the mat surface. So the forearm and the hand and the wrist can be in the same parallel line as the leg and your bare bed straps. Reaching again, exhale. You can do this with the yoga band too, but there's something very nice about the little bit of um, resilience that this band has. It has a little bit of stretch. So you can really push out and feel the support, but also feel that you can go longer. So from the top, let's take the band, both ends of the band in your right hand, 
Hold your left hand on your left hip bone, keep it steady. And think of dropping the left side of the body deeper into the ground, almost like rotating to the left as the right leg is out to the right side. You get support from the right upper arm and the elbow here on the floor. And we can do a gentle little pulse here, pulling that right leg slightly towards the shoulder and releasing it back. We're teasing open those upper inner thigh muscles. Exhale to pull the leg up to the ceiling again. Switch hands to so now the left hand holds the strap. The right arm extends out, palm is up. Arm perpendicular to the torso, right shoulder down. As you cross the right leg over, you can start moving it down to get the stretch of the outer thigh. Then you can lift him up to get the stretch of the glute and the low back. You'll also feel the stretch here diagonally across your abdominal wall and across your back. Big stretch of the chest too, and you keep that right shoulder grounded. Exhale, and we pull down to the left shoulder blade, the waist, the right hip to lift the leg high. Give a little extra stretch into the hamstring lengthening, and then fold the knee into your chest. The band comes off, and you embrace the knee into your body. After all that lengthening, you have a little compression. Wait for the joints to do both. And then let's slide the right leg forward down the mat. Shake out both legs. And I'm sure you can feel that the left leg is like pumped up and floating off the ground and the right leg is sinking into it. You have more connection on the right side of your body as well as more length. Also, if you come up and look, you should be able to see that the right leg is rotating a little more externally. The left one's kind of you know, pointing to just straighter up towards the sky. So let's do the other side, balance it out. So we'll take the bend again, pull the left leg into the chest. Wrap it around the ball to the feet at the top of the arch. Your elbow slide forward. The right leg is directly in front of the hip socket. You're lifting the left leg up. Directly over the joint. So the leg is vertical. The knee could be bent or it might be straight. It really depends. And then point and flex the foot a few times here. Like that work through the calf. And the higher you reach the heel and the more you drop down through the glute, the more you'll feel that stretch through the both parts of the legs, the calf and the hamstring. We'll end with a soft point and get ready to circle. Inhale the leg is across the right. Exhale, go low, out to the side, around all the way up to the top. Still on that one exhalation. Of course, take an extra breath if you need it. But if you have lots of excess exhale at the top of the movement, start shortening your inhalation and lengthening the exhale. You really want to challenge the ability of the lung capacity here and also your control of your breath. So if you reach, you push out into the bed, you pull back with your arm, upper arms and elbows into the back surface. And you're keeping the left side of the hip down to lift to the right and the right side of the body stays stable like it's glued to the floor as the leg goes out to the left. So for one more circle here, keep reaching out and pulling back simultaneously. Up, up to the top and we reverse the circle. Inhale out to the left of the left leg, exhale low, rotate externally or internally pull it across to the top and reach again. You're drawing a beautiful oval in the air here. And you're reaching out further and further with every repetition, trying to stretch the strap and also stretch and lengthen the muscles here in your leg. The more you reach, also the more space you create in the joints. At the same time, there's parts of your body that will gain very hard to stabilize the body on the ground. We're coming all the way around to the top to pause and get that hamstring stretch again. And then you take the band in your left hand, right hand on the right hip bone to keep it grounded without cheating. And then we take the leg out to the left and rock. And trust me, everyone treat, cheats when they learn this first, right? Because you, your focus tends to be, how low can I take that leg? And what we really want to think about, how low can I take it while I'm still kind of balancing, pulling back across the body and keeping that right foot grounded. So if you um, miscalculate it, Bring the leg up, pull the right hip down, and then try reaching out again. So let's lift the leg to the ceiling. Switch hands to the right hand, holds the strap, the left arm extends. Leg crosses over, you reach out into space. 
You can even rotate that leg a little internally to get more stretch diagonally into the glute and to go back. Remember, if it works for your body, you can take the hip off the ground, but be sure to keep the shoulder blade down. Pull the leg back towards your shoulder, get the stretch that works for you. If you're super tight through the hamstring, you might need to bend the knee, maybe even a lot, so you feel the stretch you're looking for. Exhale, roll down from the right shoulder to the waist to the left glute, and pull the leg up. One final little stretch here. And then you can fold the knee into your chest. The band is off. Embrace the leg in towards your body, and then release it forward, stretch out the long. Maybe shake out the legs. And it should be like a little mini miracle here, but for the same length, the same heaviness, heaviness and weight into the ground, but also for the lightness now that they're worked. So good job. So now let's pull the left leg into your chest, pull it onto the back of the thigh, lift the right leg up to the ceiling, lift your head back and shoulders up for a curl as before rolling up for the leg like a ball. Here you have an option of taking the ball between your thighs, or more difficult would be the ball between like your heels and your hamstrings or your glutes. So easiest is hands behind the thighs, more difficult would be to bring your hands to the shin. The elbows are lying forward so you can pull your waist back and you can step a little apart, creating more of a ball shape out of your body. You look down your nose at your navel at your cubic bone, and you lift it down and roll to the shoulders. Exhale to come up to your balance point, pressing the edges of your legs together, edges of the feet, and then inside line of the legs around the wall. Hold on. Exhale to lift to come back up. And ask your body to steer in a straight like that. If you're rolling on the road, down the yellow line, and you're coming right back up on the other one. Do it again. So if you don't have enough padding to bother your back, be sure you get more pads underneath you, even now because we have other rolling to come. So we roll back. Then you take you to the shoulder blades. Exhale, bring you back to your balance on your sacrum. That's good. And you can put the ball aside. And we're going to move back into our abs series. So your right hand will go on your Shin right above the right ankle. Do your left hand on your right shin, right below the knee. You pull that leg up into tabletop. You extend the other leg out, and then you slowly curl the tap up as you roll your spine down to your upper left curl. Pull that leg in tight. Elbows wide, and push down with your hands up with the shins. Feel that in your core. Inhale and switch left hand to left ankle, and switch right hand to right ankle. Let it look you down your nose at your abdominal wall. And you stretch the leg out as far as it can reach, so opening across the front of the hip. Every time you have your hands to your legs, pull yourself up a little deeper into the upper abdominal curl. Right, so if you want your head and your neck to be as close to vertical here in the space as possible. We're going to end with the left leg in. Pull the right leg in and lay your head down. Lower your feet. And here, let's do a little butterfly or frog. Let your knees open wide out to the side and exhale to close them. We get a little hip release here while we're resting the neck and the upper abs. This part is not traditional, but you know, it's hard to get through the abs series when you first start training for it. And then Let's bring your right knee into your chest, the left leg up, or we'll pull it up to sit it again. And then we're rolling back to your most perfect upper up curl. Find a place that challenges you to do your double leg stretch. So maybe your arms forward this time. Imagine holding the ball between your arms and squeeze in by your armpit into your upper abs. Curl the tail up, look down, and the heels dig into the floor as you go back to your upper up curl. You get a deep one, and then pull the legs in. One hand to each shin, push down with the hands up at the shins. And again, inhale, arms and legs reach to the ceiling, the legs are together, the arms are apart. You circle the arms wide as you're holding your knees in and embrace the legs to your body. In a stretch, just don't look up, keep looking down. Circle and pull everything together in a ball. You can start taking the arms further back like here, and the legs further out into space. As you, as you were able to maintain, the integrity of your body position, the torso of position. So you reach long and then you pull everything in. Eventually, you might go really flat and pull it in, but not if your back arches, not if it's too much for your neck. So you reach at whatever angle looks for you, pull it in together, 
and then wrist it down again. Walk your head side to side. Okay, so we're going to lift the right leg up to the ceiling. The left leg is forward. Press the legs a little bit forward, help you come to an upper up curl. This is scissors. So we inhale and switch the leg right leg down, the left leg up. And switch again. Again, don't follow your feet up to the sky. Down, between the legs, out at the low horizon. Use the connection, hands or leg. Help by the deeper upper outward. Do one last set. Bring your hands behind the base of your skull. Lift both legs up to the sky. Double leg, lower lift. Be super careful here. We're pushing both slightly up and down. We feel the increasing engagement of the abdominal wall, holding the pelvis steady. Exhale. Get your deep hip flexors, your psoas muscle alongside the spine. Thank you for every vertebra, every disc that actually is paying the legs out and away from you. And then you exhale to move the abdominal wall together and help you keep the spine in your neutral position as you lift the legs up. Get your forward. Slowly. Don't take them so low that you're looking up at the ceiling. So if you're losing your upper curl, come up deeper and then take the weight out in a smaller range of motion. Serious about that because I don't want you hurting your back. Reach out, squeeze the legs together, exhale. If you only move one inch with the legs, that is sufficient as long as you feel it in your core. Press it away. You have to be honest with yourself. You're the one that can hurt yourself here. Right? And then hold the knees in, lay your head down. All right. So today we're going to go into a seated roll back with an oblique twist. So let's pull the left leg in, the right leg up, and we'll forward it up to sitting and use the fair band to do it. Band around both feet, feels the ground lift. Sit upright and try to sit right on the top of your sits bone. Again, there should be a little arch in your back here. If the knees bent this way, it's pretty easy for most people to find that. Come up a little bit more there, lift your chest. Come forward more with your body. So you're going to be looking back to a really good vertical. Yeah, so it looks like you're behind your sits bones. So you come a little bit more forward. This way. Yeah, that's vertical. Feels strange, right? So let's go back. It's hard to tell without a mirror. So anyway, we're going to rotate to the, let's rotate to the left. We pull the left arm back, and we're going to tuck here and go back over the sacrum, down over the hips, curve your way down to the base of the rib cage. That left elbow is wide, so it doesn't get in the way. And then you pull yourself up, dig your heels into the floor, come up, feel like that work in the obliques, I know. And then we come back to center and we rotate to the right. So we're going down. If you're finding that your heels are lifting, um, it has to do with the body proportion and also you know, where you're built, whether you're a woman that's more weight in the pelvic girl, or like that, with the weight in the shoulders, you may want to use ankle weights here. And then let's get down again, twisting here. Only go as far as you can come up realistically, right? And then pull yourself up. Because we're trying to take momentum and gravity out of the equation. Do not rely on them for the movement. So we get to the right. Go back. You're rolling down the line of muscle just a couple of inches to the right of your spine. Just pull yourself up here. Keep that rotation going with behind your right shoulder and at the top center. If you want to try it without the band, you would just take your arms forward and then pull one elbow back. And then go down the side. Exhale, dig your heels in and lift to pull up. And then to the other side. Going down, maybe going to the tip of the scapula, maybe lift, pull it up, and set up. Right? You feel that the kind of burning sensation in your obliques? Perfect. One more set. Down to the left. Inhale to lift the head. Exhale to pull the rest of your body up. Center and then more to the right. 
That's what we want to rush to get through it, and that's what we want to really slow down for the benefit. All right, so great. So from here, slight stretch. So if you know you're tight in the back line of your body, particularly hamstrings, stretch, you want to sit upright on a couple of your blocks. When you're sitting upright, how you can tell is you should be right on your sits bones and not behind them and slumped like this. You're going to be able to really lift, and again, take your head behind your waist and go in dead in spinal curves there. So from there, whether you're elevated or not, arms still forward, parallel to the ground. First, push the chest up and push the yellow up through the top of your head, not your chin. You're still looking on a parallel line to the ground. And then you look down your nose, set the chin, move the back of the head forward to stretch the neck, shoulders stay back, and then you continue going forward with the head, neck, upper back, mid back, dive in the arc at first, and you're bringing the top of your head down between your knees to the floor. And all the way down, suck the waist back. You want to feel that stretch in the sacral area here. Now press down through your heels and your sits bones, articulate the spine up slowly, coming all the way up. One of your collarbones to lift the chest, and your gaze not soft to the horizon. Go down. Exhale all the way out, river and down. The scapula is going to start sliding around to the front of the chest as you let the ribs reach back between the blades. Round the spine here at flexion. Feel the stretch also in the back of your legs. Press down through your heels, equal weight on your two sits bones, and you step up. The tail sinks to the ground with a little bit of lift. Heart high here. And one more time. Exhale out, river, and down. First head in the neck. Be sure you're working from the top of the spine down, sequentially, we articulate over. And just hold on to the legs here. Maybe flex the feet for more stretch in the back of the legs. And suck the waist back when someone's pulling you back with their arms around your waist. Okay. So from here, let's come up. And so skip some of the things we often do now. And let's go into our standing swans first. So come on up. All right, so the goal here is to stay elongated in front of the body and then we're to the upper body back without pushing the waist forward and dropping the back, which would just like really aggravate the spinal curves here in the neck and the back. So the way we're gonna think about this is that we're taking the hands low between the navel and the pubic bone and press in. Pull up at the hands, try to pull a little bit of flush there, up, Flip the navel an inch or so, and then as you come up to the ribs, you we're taking the palms up so the heel of your hand is into the rib cage. Feel that? And then you're going to lift the ribs one by one, get to the chest, pick the chest up, take your hands to your sternum, and it slides up the sternum if you get that lengthening and widening. You get to the collarbones, there's two little bumps here, and your hands slide out along the collarbones, test curve to the shoulders. So pick up the heart a little higher, look up. Pull the elbows together, back and down, and let the head fall back if it's comfortable for you. Otherwise, take it in a place that doesn't scare you. And then exhale, so if you're sipping from the bottom to the top, to pull yourself back to a neutral position. The arms hang here, and take a deep breath in. Breathing in fully. See how much more breath you have, more breath capacity, and exhale it out. The shoulders just relax. That's good, do one more. So hands to the low abs. Push in and pull up. You definitely want to feel pressure. You definitely will feel like muscle movement. Think of the organs moving underneath that. Flip the head a little bit to pick up the ribs, to pick up the chest. Hands to the sternum. Slide up the sternum to the base of the foot, to the collarbones. Slide out. The elbows are wide first, and they pull together behind you. So the blades knit together around your spine. Heart is high. And then you exhale and release out again. You come out and let the arms settle. Feel like you're naturally standing tall. It's like not any effort. It's just like the front of the body is long, the back of the body has relaxed. Actually, a great image of that which comes from 
well, the low traditional probably is against teachers too. But you think about energy going up the front of the spine, like a water spout from the ground coming up and giving you a kind of lift to the front of your body, out to the top of your head, and then it like it cascades down like a warm shower behind your back. So the thing about you can smooth out your calves slowly, really pet them, or your shoulders slowly. And just feel that continuum lift internally up the front of the midline of the body and then down the back, relaxing the shoulders, just moving everything out and letting the tail drop with the weight of that warm water. Nice, right? Just that imagery can help you uh, improve your posture without trying to force it up by pulling the shoulders back and like creating tension in your back. So now onto the floor. I will use the roller here to do the squat on the mat. Same idea that we're not just going to push down with the arms to go up, we're going to pull the plates back to so reach that forward and up to be elongated and lengthen the abdominal wall. So take the roller forward. It's about a half position your elbow at the wrist and the arms are forward. Lower your head not to the ground, but so the ears are between the arms. And then we start, pull the tail up forward, pull the chest forward as you widen the pelvis, pull the blades back, and then bring your gaze across the floor, up the wall, to feel the stretch in the abdominal blocks. So the pubic bone is pressing into the ground, maybe the bones are as well. And you want to feel that tug as you're pulling your navel toward your eyes. And then release it down slowly, because the roller going up your back, rolling you out onto the ground, so the front of the body shortens and the back leg lengthens. Let's do that one more time. So pull forward with the head of the chest. Gaze starts to move, lift, coming up. Your legs knit together behind you. You want the ribs in the back to pull together and the ribs in the front to expand and lift. And then down you go again. Working from the sacrum, from the tail, all the way up your body until you're back down on the floor. Put the roller aside. Let's just try that from your hands by your armpits. So the roller is kind of nice, but the pull it back makes you want to go forward, right? You've got to go forward and extension to protect your back. If you just go up, you crunch your back. So that feeling of like curving, like you're, like you're away, you're going down and then lifting to come up and forward is the feeling you need for this exercise. So let's bring your hands by the armpits, put the head on the ground. So the elbows swing back a little bit. You're gonna push the heel head back to go forward with the chest. And you are gonna press with the arm, but you're still getting that feeling of expanding the front of the body as you lift. And then release from the low back to the mid back, to the upper back. And let's do that one more time. Pull back with the arms, pull forward with the chest, with the eyes come up. And then you should release back down. And then we can sit back in the child's pose. So all spines are different. Some bodies love extension, some bodies love flexion. Um, so you'll see different versions of this when you look at different people do it. We're just looking to do the best one your body can do. And hopefully like the standing swan and the swan of the roller makes it an exercise that feels like possible and something that has the potential to feel really good in your body, even if it's not something you're used to doing. Okay, so from here, let's do a shoulder bridge so you lay on your back. If you think your hamstrings would appreciate a little extra assistance so they don't cramp, you can take the ball between your thighs and press into it. Here, the arms lengthen at your side, the feet are grounded. We're beginning with a little pelvic curl. So you curl the tail forward up and the legs press down. As you pull the heels back, and you're pushing the back under your hips, the knees and the tail move forward and up. Now, when you first learn this, you just go to a plank position here. So it's a straight line from your shoulders to your hip bone press to your knees. And if your hips are tight, like if you sit a lot, that may not even be sort of possible yet. But we're working for that by using the glutes to push this up in the air. And then from here, for a little more bent, you're going to roll to the outer arm and push the top of the shoulders into the floor to pull the blades together underneath you. So the chest rises into a thoracic extension. And then you boost the butt up, pushing down through your feet. 
feel the strength in the back line of your body. Now to come out of it, we're going to start with the upper back. So roll the shoulders up slightly, roll to the inside of the arm, and feel the blades move sideways. And then you can feel the upper spine go down between the scapula. Curve your upper back into the mat. So be sure you go down through the shoulder blades first. We're gradually down to the base of the ribs, down to your waist, down to your hips, down to your sacrum. And finally, when you go to the tail, the body rocks a little bit, the arch of the back is lifted. And we do that again. So you, part, you spread your feet into the floor, hands to, pull back to the heel of the head, pull back to the heels, propel the tail forward and the knees forward. It's like there's magnets on your shins, pulling you towards the wall in front of you. Come up, knees through the plank. Press the outer arm down. You want to pull the top of the shoulders down and in so that your heart rises here. The sternum is floating up with that lift. Get a little bit more glute. Don't let the knees fall open. You're still engaging your inner thighs. And then to come out of it, roll to the inner arms. Go have the blades separate and widen so there's space for the spine and the ribs to sink between the shoulder blades. Curve down here. It's fine if the shoulders come up and you feel the chest now. In fact, think of your sort of dropping to the ground to help lower the spine. And then continue down through the lower ribs to the waist. Release the vertebra one by one into the floor. Good. We're going to go up one more time and hold that bridge and do a little bit of what's called marching. So take the ball out from between your legs here. And then we begin again, pressing through your feet, through your arms. Rock the tail forward and up. Come through the plank and up into thoracic extension. Lift the butt up high. Now, you're going to cantilever the right side out from the left. So you pick up the right knee and lift the knee. Lift the right hip bone up a little bit and then exhale, lower the foot down. Our goal is not to let that right butt cheek drop when you pick up the right leg. Ditto on the left. So push down with your right foot, pick up the left knee, with the knee, lift the hip a little bit there, and then lower the foot with control. Then into your foot, and when both feet are down, lift your pelvis and try to square off the hips, because chances are, when you first learn this, they drop a little bit to the side. So now we're gonna pull the right leg up again, strong with the left leg, strong with the back line of your body, lower the foot down, Press the sole of the foot, press the arms, pick up the left leg. Think of lifting the hip of the crest as you lower the foot, as you lower the knee. One more set here. This would be easy if you didn't have to keep the pelvis level, right? That's the work. It's so you can feel the diagonal muscles in the front of your body and the back of your body, trying to stabilize the side that isn't supported with the leg to the side that is supported. With the foot underneath that. So when both feet are down, boost your hips up. Even with the best intentions, they tend to fall down a little bit. Curl the shoulders up slightly, roll the upper back down, release your spine down a little bit at a time from all the way down here until the tail settles and sinks. Okay, we're rocking forward and up, pull the left knee in, right leg to the ceiling, come up to sitting. All right, so now for a little bit of teaser work. So, choose the band here. Take it around your feet. Sit up, arch the back slightly. So you can feel the difference between the arch back and the round back when you go there. This also just helps you improve your posture if you really think about what it's like to be vertical in space. So, then we'll curl the tail up, pull back with your waistline to balance on your sacrum. Go back a little bit, your feet get light, and you lift them up. Now from here, hold the torso where it is and push the legs slowly out into the band without arching the back. So you're gonna really keep that feeling of tight and short in the abs, long and curved in the back. And then pull the legs back in. Hold the position here as you reach out and away. Doesn't have to be fully extended. If the legs are too low, your back will arch, right? And if they're too high, you'll pull over backwards. So we're looking for the sweet spot where you keep the curve in your body. Maybe choke up on the band if you have your hands all the way back by your shoulders. 
like wrap it around and hold it a little tighter and you'll get more support. And then press away again. So it might stretch, but this is a challenge to hold the C-curve spine as you work your legs. Good job. Lower the heels down, open the knees, let go of the tree your legs, pull your waist back, stretch out your back, and each them into an arch. Because when you're learning things, sometimes you don't do it perfectly, right? It'd be too much to ask of us. Um, the sun the learning curve goes. And now we're coming up again. Again, start with the pelvic top. The tail moves up, the waist moves back and in a curve. Lift the feet here, pull the feet where they are. And now we're curling the tail up more to start to roll the low back down. Put down an inch or so, and then exhale, pull to come up, pulling the legs where they are. It's okay. The main thing is you want to be careful that when you move back, you're not arching the back because that's going to really hurt. You've got to have a rounded C curve by lifting the tail and rolling a little bit of the sacrum. Keep that upper arm curl going. Get down a little bit, come up a little bit. And work also to keep the weight equal, the work equal at the right and left side of the body. So let's tuck and go back again. Round the back slowly. And then pull the head and the chest up, pull the waist back. Come back up to your balance. Everybody feeling okay with that? You're looking good. And then lower the feet again. And inside, you open it up and let's stretch your spine. Okay. Teas are here. Both, both ends of the body are moving. We warmed you up. So you're going to start curling the tail first, protect the back. Push the feet out slowly as you bring your spine down towards the ground. We're not going all the way. And then we're lifting and pulling it in. So the slow motion teaser really works you and also keeps you safe. Because a lot of times what I see is people just like kind of like you hear they fall back and they just pull themselves up. And that like feels terrible because you're not engaged in your sport. Right. And you're just kind of like, oh, I hope I can do this. Right. <laughs> So, but if you work it here from the top and really understand like what it means to imprint your back into the ground and get around that inverse curve, you're gonna have no problem with this. It may take a while, but once you get it, you've got it like forever and you'll, you won't get hurt because you're paying attention to your body and you understand how to balance the forces and balance the weight from your center. And the center changes as you're moving, right? So let's just do one more. Because I need one to make up for that last Crazy thing that I just did. So we pull the tail up, we pull the waist back. The feet go out as the spine goes down. Eventually, what would happen is your heels would be down and you're on the tip of the blades. And then you could lift the feet and pull the waist in as you round your back again. Good. If you want individual help for anything, including this one, just grab hold of the after class. All right. Oh my God. And we're actually done for today. That went by so fast. Thank you guys. And so next week is spring break. There's no class here. We do have the, um, the videos on the YouTube channel for Swap for Recreation and Wellness. So you can go back and look at some of the other ones to continue your practice while you're away or while you're here doing whatever it is you're doing during the break. But thank you so much. And I'll see you in two weeks. All right. Good job.